first of all, let me tell you, if you want to look at character and character matters in leadership, there is no Nigerian who will deny the fact that the president is not a man of integrity. And in everything, if a person is competent, super competent, if he lacks integrity, that competence will amount to nothing. So in terms of character, he has a solid character. No Nigerian, and no Nigerian anywhere can take that away from Mr. President. That's one. And when he came, he outlined the things that he's going to do when he becomes a president, which he has been pursuing since he was sworn in as president. He promised that he was going to fight corruption. Corruption has come on the agenda, you know, in Nigeria. And he's fighting it. People are going to jail. People have been investigated. Properties have been, have been seized. Some people have run out on, in, on, on exile because they could not defend their wealth, you know. So, no, any Nigerian today who wakes up to tell you that this president, this government is not fighting corruption, you know, must be, must be dreaming. Secondly, he said that he was going to look at the economy. And he is, he's working on that. He's diversifying the economy. A lot has changed. A lot of progress has been made in the area of food production, in the area of agriculture. You know, by next year, it is said that we may not again uh, import, uh, a, you know, a, a, single, a single grain of rice. You know, right now, 95% of the rice we are consuming is produced here in Nigeria. You know, so many other things have been explored. You know, in the area of uh, mineral resources, so much is being done, you know, to make sure that we earn income from other sources than, uh, than, than oil. He promised that, you know, apart from the fact that he has blocked you know, all the leakages in government, most of the, if not all, most of the leakages in government. So that is freeing up more resources for, for infrastructure development, you know. So that has been achieved. He then talked about making Nigeria secure. And that is an ongoing process. I remember in 2015, I was in the Senate here. You need to come to the Senate and see the, the level of security there. We were all afraid at any time Boko Haram could strike, the place could be bombed. Everywhere in Abuja, nobody felt you know, free to, to move around. There were diversions everywhere. The roads being blocked, you know, with all manners of barrier. There were bomb blasts in the marketplace, you know, somewhere. There was one in the, in the motor park somewhere, you know. Attacks here and there. In Kano, a, a, a mosque was attacked and several people died. And you, you hear incidents all over the country. But that has stopped. But there are remnants of Boko Haram at the fringes of, uh, of, Bono, of Bono State, and that is the nature of terrorism. It's not something that goes away in a day. I mean, I remember, I remember the, the case of the Red, Red Brigade in, in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in Italy. For over a period of 25 years, the Red Brigades were a terror to Italy, but over the time, they fizzle out, just the way Boko Haram is going to fizzle out as well. In the Western society, there have been cases of terrorism. In today, in Britain, in America, there are special departments set up to fight terrorism. The same thing we are doing in Nigeria. So on the issue of security, we can, stock up, we can score Mr. President a pass. So he came on those agenda, and for me, he has passed. And let me also say this, a problem created over several years, how many years of military government, how many 15 years of uh, PDP rule, you think that problem can, all of those problems can be solved within three years? You know, it is the nation of, you know, building foundation. Let, 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 let me just give an example. Somebody comes to a community, set a house on fire, a house that, you know, has been existing, that has been built over the years. You put a fire to it, and then somebody is saying you should reconstruct it. You think that can be done overnight? You will first of all clear the debris. You take away the debris, you hire an architect, you know, to design a new house, then you do a foundation, and then begin to put blocks upon blocks, you know, before you begin to see that things are, are going on. Let me even use an allegory. You know, over the years, all through the reign of PDP for 16 years, they said they were going to construct a bridge, a second Niger bridge. They kept going there, uh, laying foundation, commissioning, you know, budgeting for it, and nothing happened. Now, Buhari is committed to that, and work is going on there day and night. If you have not seen the bridge come up now, it is because, you know, you have to provide foundation. And the foundation for the Niger, second Niger bridge, is almost 12 story, uh, you know, deep down in the, in, in, the, in the water. And that is the kind of thing we are doing now. We are building a solid foundation for Nigeria. Nobody commends you for building a foundation. 
You are only commended at the time the house has, has risen up, you have roofed it, you are fixing the windows, you are painting, you are decorating. That's, why when, where, 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 that's when somebody will say, oh, congratulations, this is a very beautiful house. We, we, we shall get there. We shall get there. We cannot score ourselves 100% now. We already, Nigerians are scoring us a pass mark. Yes, things may be difficult for some people. People may be angry because free money has dried up. You know, no nation grows on free money. We must all be productive. We must all co uh, contribute our quota. A time, the time when somebody goes to the villa and collected free $200,000 without doing anything, without add any, adding any value, it's over. It cannot come back again. We shall not allow that to come back. Whatever money is available, whatever resources are available in this country, the president has said, will be used, you know, for the development of our infrastructure for the reconstruction of our schools, for the for, for, for provision of medical facilities in hospitals, for building great airports, for building railway line from Lagos to, to Kano, from Lagos to Calabar, from uh, Portaco to Maiduguri, from uh, uh, Alaja to Wari. All of this is the kind of things the president is spending money on. If you come to visit him today, you are an imam, uh, a bishop, a great pastor, an emir, an obi, a kbsc, and you come to give, give. The man talk to you, try to convince you of what he's doing, you know, give you a handshake, take photograph with you. If you are lucky, they give you water, tom tom and bitter cola, and you go home. That is the kind of man he is. And that is why a number of elites are shouting and shouting. He has said, whether you like it or not, Nigerians must live a good life. And that is why he has come to power. That is why, you know, he's sacrificing his retirement you know, to be in government so that he could leave a legacy, a legacy of service, a legacy of a country with functioning infrastructure, a legacy of... Being